Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are getting ready to close out Photoshop month over on the blog, which is in celebration of my recent Intro to Photoshop course with Brit & Co. And if you've ever felt overwhelmed by Photoshop, it's a great intro class to really help anyone who feels a little intimidated and not sure where to start. So I'll leave a link in the description for that course. But in this week's tutorial, we're gonna walk through a really cool time-saving tip, which is Photoshop Action. So I'm gonna walk you through how to create an action and then how to use an action and when it's appropriate and when it's not. So as you can see on my screen right now, I've got this image, I've got this image, and this one. And these are all royalty-free stock photography from unsplash.com. And if you've never heard of Unsplash before, it's an awesome royalty-free stock photography website. So I'd highly recommend uh, if you're ever in need of some stock photos and are um, a little tight on your budget, it's a great place to find some really high quality photos. So I've pulled these ones and I'll I'll leave uh, links in the description to these photographs if you're interested in using these. And what I want to do is I want to apply a width of a thousand pixels to all these photographs. And as you can see, if I go image, image size, this one's almost 5,500 pixels wide. This one is almost 4,000 pixels wide. And this one is almost 5,600 pixels wide. So they're all different widths. So I want them all to be 1,000 pixels wide and I want them all to have kind of a sepia tone look to them. So this is a perfect situation for using an action to really save us time so I don't have to apply the same settings to every photograph knowing that those are qualities that all of them are going to have in common. So what you need to do is open up your actions palette and if you don't see it, you can get to it by going window, actions and Photoshop by default puts your actions in different folders and I'm just going to leave mine in default actions. These are some of the older actions that I have. So all we need to do is make sure that uh, the first layer that we're using for all of these is labeled the exact same thing. So they're all called background here. And that's really important because it gives Photoshop a starting point to begin your action. And if they're all labeled differently, it's going to look for the one that you based your action off of. So make sure your first begin layer is labeled the same across all of your photos. So what we're going to do is create a new action. So we're just going to click this little icon right here and label this 1000 pixel sepia and hit record. And now it's going to record every single thing that I do. So the first thing I want to do is desaturate my layer because I want to apply that sepia tone quality to it. So I'm just going to grab my hue saturation adjustment right here. And if you don't see your adjustments panel, you can get to it by going window adjustments. And I'm just going to desaturate this photograph, but not all the way because I need to add that sepia quality to it. And then I'm going to create a new layer right down here. And I'm going to uh, fill this layer with brown with an overlay for the blend mode. So I'm just going to click on my background color right here and choose a brown that I feel like is pretty good. And then I'm going to hit Command Delete or Control Backspace if you're on a PC and that'll fill the entire layer. And then I'm going to come over here to my blend mode and change it to overlay. And now I've got this really nice kind of sepia tone quality to the photograph. And if I turn off these adjustments, you can see we've made some good progress. Now the last thing I want to do is make this photograph and all the other photographs 1000 pixels wide. So I'm going to come over here and go image, image size, 1000 pixels. So I'm creating this exactly as I would if I were just doing it for one photograph. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got everything that I need for this photograph. Once I'm happy with all the adjustments that I need to apply to my other photographs, I can come back over to my actions palette and hit stop. So this is going to stop recording everything from here on out. Now you can see it's been recording everything that I've done. So I'm just going to close this up by clicking that arrow and I'm going to keep it selected. And then I'm going to jump over to my second photograph and with it selected, I'm going to hit play. And once again, make sure that you're on the right layer if you've got multiple layers in your different documents. So I'm going to hit play. And once I do that, it takes a second, but it'll run the action and it's going to apply all those things that it recorded, all these steps. It's going to record the exact same ones in the exact same order. And as you 
you can see over here, I've got my hue saturation layer that it added with the exact same settings that I had before. It's using the same brown that I used. And let's check the size, image, image size, and you can see it's set it to a thousand pixels. So that's a huge time saver, especially if you've got a lot of adjustments that you need to do across all of your photographs. So I'm gonna come over here to my very last photograph and we're gonna do it one more time. I'm just gonna hit the play button, making sure that I have the action that I created selected hit the play button and there you go. So all the settings are set and from here I can adjust anything uh, if this feels a little too dark and I need to lighten it up. At least I have a base that I didn't have to go through the work of creating beforehand because I've already done it before. So another really great time-saving tip for your Photoshop workflow. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday and don't forget to head on over to my blog every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.